Hello, key friends. This is Barb Gully of Barb's Tea Service. Hello. Hello, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you. Yes, it's good to be seen. Yeah, so here with On TV Studios, we are doing Podcast 24. Uh-huh. Chris, studio engineer, co-host, and Arm Candy. Yes. We, we seem to be missing one. What happened to 23? Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Glad you said that. That's right. So we are doing two for it. Uh-huh. Two this week. Yes. Really ambitious. Yes, yes. <laughs> so we did Podcast 23 on Monday, but it was our first remote podcast. Uh-huh. In a secret location. In a secret location. Well, not that secret. No. <laughs> <laughs> we had our special guest, our son, Rob. Right. And we had it at his home on a lake. Right. And it we we are going to be posting that yep. remote podcast right. soon onto our YouTube station, Barb's Tea Service. Right. But we do have a sneak pre sneak peek. Yes. Preview. Yeah. Preview. Yeah. 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 Yes. We'll, we'll do that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that it's uh, a couple of minutes. It, it's posted already on our YouTube. Yeah. And we do know we need to work on the lighting. Yes. So, All right. But yeah. everything kind of went. Uh, it, it went great. It went great yes. for our first remote. Yes. You know, you got to start somewhere. That's right. 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 So this is 24. Mm-hmm. And we're going to. Kind of mix a few of yep. our remote podcasts yep. and last week's podcast, some of the topics. Right. So I'm going to say ciao and good day, Chris. Good day. <laughs> I said good day. Well, you did. <laughs> right. So we were talking about tea rooms in Italy. Uh-huh. And we're going to conclude yep. today with our tea room in Venice. Uh-huh. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about British speak. Yeah. And we're going to do that courtesy a British tea room in New York. Yes. Okay. Very good. Very good. And then we are going to wrap up with some etiquette. Mm-hmm. If we have time. Yep. Because when we were at Rob's, we tested him on some dining etiquette. Yes. And he got the answers right. Right. But he questioned them. He has opinions. <laughs> yes. Since the day he could talk, he yeah. was always questioning. Yes. And usually that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it usually yeah. is. But yeah. uh, <laughs> very good. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about we're gonna circle back for that rationale. Right. And then we have also another protocol etiquette question, but not dining. It's apparel and accessorizing. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. I know okay. you like accessorizing. I do. Okay. And so we're going to broach okay. a topic on brooches. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But first Tea. Okay, so today we're trying Rosie Lee Tea uh-huh. from Tea and Sympathy, a, a tea room in New York. Yes. So, do you think you could? Oh yes. Let's uh, get take, that. Take a look at that on the camera. All right, it's up. Okay. So that has a, that's the tin, the tea uh-huh. tin, it has the, the picture of the tea room right. on it. Uh-huh. So let's take a little taste. Yes, all right. This let's, is Rosa Lee, Rosie Lee. Okay, that's a very, uh, it's a very good, it's a black tea. Right. Uh, kind of, kind of straightforward, um, little um, uh, uh, earth, earthiness maybe? Yes. Yeah, okay. Great. You yep. picked up on that yep. because this is a breakfast tea. Right. Okay. It's a breakfast tea. And we had talked about breakfast teas before right. in right. earlier podcasts, usually more of that stronger. Right. Right. Kind of. C- kind of um, some of them to the, to the point of peatiness or something exactly, like that. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But this says on the label that it's refined for the American palate. As it should be. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm not exactly sure. I It is smoother, I right. think. Right. 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 I think. I think. They've got that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Maybe not quite as, as, um, yeah. PD or, yeah. Right. Anyway, it's very good. Mm -hmm. And I chose this for a reason. So, Uh first, I'm going to talk a little bit about where I I purchased this. Okay. Yep. And, oh, and to let you know, this does have caffeine. We brought it to a full boil and took, uh, steeped it for about four minutes. Okay. And this tea I purchased at Tea and Sympathy. Mm -hmm. It is a tea room in Greenwich, New York. So it's lower Manhattan. Right. And I've been there two times. Uh I was there in 2007 when I was starting my, or enhancing my tea education. 
I was there with Elizabeth Knight, right. the former tea sommelier at St. Regis. Uh-huh, yes. So she took me all around, and she said, you've got to go to Tea and Sympathy uh-huh. when, when she dropped me off. Right. And I loved it because it what reminded me, we had just been to England in 2006, uh-huh. and it reminded me of some of those just unassuming, unpretentious tea rooms. Yes. It's not the Ritz. Uh-huh. It's not Claridge's. And I love those, yeah, too. Yeah, right, right, right. But yeah. this was just kind of your, your standard... It'd be know. something you'd find in uh, in maybe a, 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 an English village. Yes, exactly. Right. Exactly. It had that vibe. Yes, it did. It has the, the old wooden floors, yep. the bric-a-brac on mm-hmm. the shelves, the stout little teapots. Right. So I was there in 2007, and then we went back in 2022, two years ago. Right. We were there with Matt, our yes. son, who mm-hmm. was there. And they had we had a wonderful afternoon tea. Yes. It was one, great. But I had written about this in two blogs. Right. My 2007 blog, yes, barbseashop.blogspot.com. That's an early one. That was our first year of doing yep. the blog, right? And then one in 2022. So okay. if you want to know a little bit more about tea and sympathy, yep, there you go. You can go to those those blogs. But the reason I selected this was because of something else that was on the label, mm-hmm. and the name Rosie Lee. Right. It comes from what they refer to as Cockney slang no cockney rhyming slang yes and what it is is apparently it's something where they they pick a uh, something that rhymes right. with the word they're referring right. to right kind of emphasizes it right exactly yeah. Yeah, yeah so rosie lee becomes tea right so we're having a cup of rosie lee, lee. tea and it rhymes mm-hmm. <laughs> so i thought well All right. because you had actually won something for us yes at uh what was that oh the magic show yes it was yes and it's hosted and the By performers. A very nice british couple yep right and they tested us on british speak right and you won for our table totally by totally guessing Yes, and we, we mentioned this in the remote podcast, right. and we tested Rob on it. Right, right, right. Because one of the words was lug hole. Right. And you said? Uh, misshapen earlobe, because I was attempting humor. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else was kind of off, yeah, but, right. but you were close because it's ear. Right. So. Yep. What? There you go. There you go. You learn so, something new every day, whether you want to or not. Exactly. Right. So. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh. All right, so we're, we're a little over all yeah. over the map yeah, today. Yeah. Right. So if you can follow along, right. great. Right. All right, so now let's move on to menace. Menace, uh-oh. That's the, my Cockney slang rhyming for Venice. <laughs> Very good, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so last week we mentioned that we had been in Rome. Uh-huh. We went to a lot of different places, including Babington's Tea Room, right, right on the Spanish Steps. But that was not all of our Italy tour. We also spent some time in Florence, Uh and we spent some time in Venice. Yes. Okay. And Florence, we went to the Uffizi Gallery. Right. And I'm going to just put this book up there. This was one of the... There we go. Okay, it's on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was when... So when we were in Florence, this Mm -hmm. is my little takeaway from that. And we got to see... Oh my gosh, I use the word awesome yeah, a lot, yeah. uh-huh. but this is what is. is really yeah. awesome. Is. I mean, these are these Renaissance painters, right. pictures that everybody has seen, right. but not up close personal I necessarily. Know. They're a real thing. Oh my gosh, they're incredible. Yeah. And then Michelangelo's. Right, the David. Yeah. The David, yeah. yes. And it's so perfect. I know, yeah. It almost seems fake. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So for all you conspiracy yeah. theorists out yeah, yeah. there, maybe there it is, isn't okay. real. No, no, no. We don't want to spread no, no. anything like that. No, no. Okay. So when we were in Venice, though, this is where we really splurged yeah, we did. on accommodation. Yes. And you were working with someone. You had a coworker who was Italian. Yeah, he from, was. Yeah. From mm-hmm. Italy. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And, and, he, and he recommended this place. Right. And that was? The Hotel Becker. Yes. And this was, it was beautiful. Yep. And I'll even say our room was somewhat palatial. It was, yes. (laughs) And it had two little balconies overlooking a canal. Uh Uh-huh. So we weren't on the Grand Canal, but there's a lot of canals in Venice. That's what it's known for. And Rachel and I would make our tea. They had this lovely tea and coffee buffet in our room. Right. 
and we each would sit on the balcony mm-hmm. and watch the people going over the bridges yep. and the boats going down the drinking canal. it all in yeah literally but, and figured yes you're right all right and then so we'd watch the boats go and right. when we were in venice of course we did the yeah the gondolas we you have to you do have that, to right yes. it's required it is required but there was one thing that i think really captivated you on this canal yes you spent some time uh-huh. watching i did well uh so just um i was kind of curious how this worked so they don't have streets they have uh basically <laughs> a lot of waterways and, right you know um you got to take out the trash somewhere <laughs> somehow right so i happen to notice uh basically a kind of a gondola slash scow pulling up <laughs> And uh, so I kind of watched that. That was, uh, you know, it's odd that that's kind of a high point for me, but <laughs> that's what that's what I do. So it was kind of this, you know, uh, people would put their stuff out on the balconies, and this kind of crane thing would come up, and it was it was not a hurried affair, <laughs> <laughs> to be sure, but uh, it got the job done. So anyway, that's my fascinating Venice story. You know, it, it is incredible because it's those things, details are kind of lost. Right, but right, It's right. like, how did they do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. you think about yeah, it. Yeah. So you got to witness that. That's right. So anyway, we we di- we go back to uh, to St. Mark's Square. Right, right. Kind of the central place in Venice. Uh-huh. And we went to Cafe Florian. We did. And this was recommended, as we said earlier, by our friend Pam, who had been there a few times. Right. And she said it's, <clears throat> it's very crowded. Uh-huh. But... You'll love it. It's right. it's pretty. Mm-hmm. It's historical. Right. And the food is great. Right. So I thought, hmm, I talked to my editor at, about yep. a story yep. for Tea Time, and she said, go for it. Sounds great. So we had kind of a, a private yes. tour and experience. It yes. was really, yep. really quite wonderful. So one of the managers, Anna Marita, uh-huh. she came to greet us. Yes. And she gave us a tour yep. of the whole place. Yep. Remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. She, Real VIP stuff. Oh yes, <laughs> and she was just so yeah. warm, oh, yeah, friendly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't think she knows a stranger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah I yeah. felt like I knew her for right. uh, ever. And she gave us the tour. She brought us into this one room where they have the infinity mirror. Right. And you can see like a thousand yeah, yeah. Uh, images. Right, right, right. So I recommend go on a good hair day. You have to, <laughs> because you don't want to be seeing that no, no, no. for uh, for a thousand times. But they also had those, showed us how they had those tables designed yes, and you uh-huh. can tilt them right. and, and swirl yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, there are these heavy tables, but they're very movable. And, and it's because it is so crowded, there's a lot of people. It's, I mean, it's a big enough space, but it's, right. it's not overly large. No. They had to be a little uh, uh, creative with how you pack people in. Absolutely, yeah. they did. And uh, so, uh, you know, space is always a premium right. there. But I think it also accommodated some of the women's fashion too. Yes. It was easy for yep. them to get in and out. Yep. But that was uh, that was really yep. uh, really amazing to see all the little rooms that they had. Right. And then of course the food. Yes. Delicious. Uh-huh. Incredible scones, right. sweets, yep. savories, and everything is just yep. so artistic. Right. It's all served on the silver platter. Uh-huh. And even this, they had an herbal tea. Yes. And it was made from rose petals. So uh-huh. it has this like lovely cherry hue. Right. And it's served in a French press. Uh-huh. So you see the glass. And then they have on the lid, there's a little glass bead that matches the same color as the tea. Yeah. I mean, all detail. Yeah, right. So beautiful. How can you not love it? Yeah. But I thought it might be interesting. Yes. To talk about the history of this place. I mean, yeah. where did it come from? Yeah. So we mentioned Babington's had had history that dated over 100 years. Right, right. Well, right. this has got them beat by a couple yeah. centuries. It's been around for a while. It has been. Yeah. So it was started in 1720 uh-huh. by Floriano Francesconi. Francesconi. You've, been, you've been practicing that. <laughs> I still will probably get it wrong. <laughs> right. But it was started in the 1720s, and over the years, it's attracted a lot of famous people, right. a lot of artists. Mm-hmm. Including not just us. Yes. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but Casanova, uh-huh. Balzac, uh-huh. Shelley, Byron, and later Hemingway. Amazing. Uh, yeah, it yeah. is. Okay, so our our guy Floriano, he starts at it's just this two room coffee house. Right. And then when he dies, his nephew takes over uh-huh. in seventeen. I think seventeen seventy six. Yep. Yes, mm-hmm. his nephew takes over. 
Valentino. Right. And Florino's a great guy, but this guy apparently yeah. exceeds him in just this big personality right. and all this charisma. Yeah, kind of a showman. Kind of a showman, yeah, yes. Right. And so he expanded the footprint uh-huh. of, of the cafe, and he also fought the government <gasps> because at the time they had banned women from patronizing such venues. Yeah, well, he, we're not going to stand for that, are we? No, and he didn't, <laughs> and he won. That's right. So we have much amore yes, right. for Valentino. And then we get to the 19th century, and then it just transforms. Right. They're bringing in the artists from the area, right. and they just create this gorgeous yep. spot. Yep. And it has frescoed walls, yep. carved ceilings. Mm-hmm. They've got those beautiful red velvet yep. benches and the marble tables. Yep. A many... place a place to see and to be seen. Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were being watched yeah. by nobody. Yeah. But okay, so it so then they also expanded the menu. Right. So they had their their typical coffee and chocolate. Right. That, that right. would be what the locals were used right. to, but they expanded to, to include tea uh-huh. to attract the foreigners. Yes. Okay. All right. So so they've added onto the menu. They've they've remodeled this beautiful place, and then in the 1900s, mm-hmm. for about 70 years, there's a family called the Daldi. Right. And they run it. Right. Until 2009. Uh huh. And it sold to an investment group. Right. But lucky yeah. for patrons, yeah. right? They've kept the spirit yeah. of the cafe. Yeah. It it, it was wonderful. It, it was, and Anna Marita, she was she was so excited and so yeah. happy, and she just said, "When you come here, right, it it's something transforms. You you change when you walk through the door. Yes, it's it's magical." And Floriano had had said his motto was always wear your best smile. What a great thing, isn't it? Yeah. And I think we were wearing our best smile. It was great. Yes, and I I put on my best smile when I think about it. <laughs> and oh, I want to show a few things from All right. the the tea room. Okay. So, I don't can you see the book in the background there? Uh, we will shortly. Okay. See that? Yeah. So that's all about the cafe. Anna Maria gave us that yeah. along with a lot of tea. Uh-huh. And this is their packaging. All right. Again, beautiful. Yes. And if you want to learn more, uh-huh. this is in the January, February, 2019 issue of Tea Time. There it is. Yep, there right. it is. All right. Okay. All right. So we covered all of that. And. All right. Okay. So good on time. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Yep, yep. Excellent. Then we are, we're going to leave Italy for a little bit. We're going to say ciao. Ciao. For a bit. All right. And maybe to return again. But. Now I wanted to talk and shift gears to etiquette. Yes. One of our favorite topics. It is. And we've talked a lot throughout our podcast about etiquette. Yep. We've got a book. Yep. Barb's Tea Service, 12 yep. Etiquette Essentials. Uh-huh. And there are really two reasons why etiquette exists. Uh-huh. And the first one is, as we've discussed before. Right. It's a class distinction. It is. It's a marker. It's a marker. If you behave a certain way, you know, you're pegged. You know, (laughs) people know who you are. Yes. So like when we were talking about wearing white after Labor Day. Right. There may have been some small practical reasons for that. Right. But really, you could still wear white. Right. But if you did. Yes. In the Gilded Age. Oh. Up until. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Past few decades. Right. Fairly recently. People thought that mm, yeah, you're yeah. breaking the code. I know. And you are. Yeah. yeah I think it kind of persists to this day in some circles. <laughs> a little knows. bit. Yeah, yeah, a yeah, little yeah. bit. Yeah. But they don't toss you out. They may talk about yeah, you. Yeah, right, right, right. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. The other reason is just to be considerate. Right. And respectful. Right. Thoughtful. Sure. And to provide a little bit of order. Yes. So things aren't so chaotic. Ugh, we hate chaos. We do. <laughs> and. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. Still doing the allergy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Stop it. I know. (laughs) So with Emily Post, she is the guru. She's the one who really literally wrote the book Uh on etiquette. Yes. And she's very much for that. She's a proponent of the second reason. Right. No, let's be thoughtful. Let's be considerate. And I would highly recommend 
reading her book. Uh-huh. It's a good read. Yeah. It's still fairly timeless. Yes. And it's funny. She's got a good sense of yeah, humor. Right. So anyway, she was the one who stuck to, okay, if it makes sense, right. let's do that. So when we were talking to Rob, we quizzed him on when you're at a dining table right. and you're passing the food, right. which direction do you go? Yeah. You, you don't think about that, but it's important. It is important. And you pass it to the right. Uh-huh. And he got it correct. Yes. But then he said, well, why? Why? Yeah. Is it because... Most people are right-handed. Uh-huh. So that makes sense. Yes. So I know it's a convention. Right. Because it's like driving on a certain right. side of the road. In yep. the U.S., we all agree on one side. Right. Well, most more, of the More time, or less, yeah. Except when you're on the road. <laughs> that's right. That's Everybody right. gets in front of that's you. That's right. <laughs> Sadly. But yeah. then, so it's a convention. And everybody agrees to do that. Right. And so it won't be right. chaos. So he was on to the fact that the right hand kind right. of, most people were right-handed. It, yeah. It's sort of established that way. But like Emily Post does say, it has to make sense yeah, too. Right, right. So if somebody on your left is, wants the salt or yeah. the mashed potatoes, just the, give it to them. Yeah, I mean we don't have to go <laughs> no. all around. Yeah, and uh, or, or even a, a table, uh, a chair or two over. Right. And also look at it at the setup. Right. I mean sometimes maybe right won't. Yeah. Uh, but if it does. Yeah. Make sense. That that's a good order. Remember to do clockwise. Right. Right. Or counterclockwise. Yeah, right. right, right. Yeah, counterclockwise. <laughs> and it's one of those things that if you see somebody passing food to the left uh-huh. and everybody's doing right, yeah, don't blow your yeah, yeah. your etiquette police right. whistle. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Would you? <laughs> I, I did not know that was a thing. <laughs> At least there's a whistle? <laughs> <laughs> well, we just want to make sure that people aren't going, yeah. oh, that's the wrong way. Yeah. This is. Oh, or uh, if you're if you're gonna kind of elevate your speech, you'd say uh, if you're passing it correctly, it's adroitly, and if you're passing it the wrong way, it's gauche. It is. That's <laughs> right. Well, am I clever or what? You are very clever, <laughs> because gauche means left yeah. in in French, and people weren't crazy about yeah. going left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was sort of considered. Yeah, a, yeah. it was gauche. Yeah, and now I mean. There's so many left-handers that you just yeah. go, oh, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. They're usually artistic, right? And we we know someone in yeah. our family, <laughs> that. <laughs> yes, so. yeah. Okay, so right. yes, you could you could say that. Yeah. Okay, uh, all right. I just did. <laughs> <laughs> Very clever. All right. Okay, so then the other the other protocol or etiquette question we right. had was right. from a faithful li- listener, yeah. also an attendee of one of our recent teas. Yes. So. We had this tea that I talked about last week with, right. with 12 ladies uh-huh. in a tea room. And on my invitation, I said, I suggested, yeah. if you'd like, yeah. wear a favorite pin. Yes. And it's a, I do it for a couple reasons. Right. One is because it's a conversation right. piece. Right. It, people, it, you learn about some of their histories. Right. Like, were they, where they purchased it, maybe they it was at... Uh, when they were on vacation uh-huh. or a certain spot or it just brought back memories or it reminded them of their grandma or their mom. Right. And so that was one reason. And the other reason is you just don't really get a chance to wear these. No. And they're so pretty. They are. And they're generally mostly for decoration. Mm-hmm. So we had most of the people who wore them, but our faithful listener said she noticed that she was the only one that wore it on the other side everyone else yep. had it on one side right she wore it on the other right. is there a convention for that uh-huh and there actually is okay because early on pins were used to just put things together right. they didn't have zippers right. or velcro yep. so in the they Roman, had a utilitarian function. yes yep. exactly so then so in roman times ancient yep. times people are just gathering right, right, right. stuff together but then by the time we get to you know england the royals right. and the aristocracy yep. They would pin them on the left. Right. And that's because there was so much greeting and uh-huh. reaching out. Yes. And most people are right handed yeah. mm-hmm. that they would be able to see the the, yes. the pin or yes. the brooch. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that the tradition now is to wear it yeah. on the left. And that yeah. way most people can see it. Yeah. You think about too when you go to a yeah. a business meeting or convention. Yeah. 
you put your hello on, yeah, right. yeah. on this side yeah. because most of us are shaking yeah. with our right hands, not huh. to leave out our... Who knew? Uh, I know. So now we do know. Right. And I had a couple of, of special brooches. Okay. One, I, I'm wearing the pin Okay. Yep. that you won for yep. uh, the lug hole. That's right. <laughs> a little British pin. Yeah. Then I have this one that's right. from our daughter, Rachel. Yes. Uh-huh. It's a sunflower. Right. And that was the theme of her wedding mm-hmm. and her shower. Yeah. So it has yeah. a lot of special meaning. And then I have another one that I okay. I brought, and I don't know. All right. I'm going to take this out. I'll, right. I'll place it on the box. It might show up a little bit better. There you go. Yeah. You Sam. see it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I my mom bought this for me uh-huh. back probably in the 90s. Right. And she was in Stratford right. with her retiree group. Uh-huh and Stratford, Ontario, right. and uh, th- among their their things to do, they got time to shop. She mm-hmm. saw this in a gift shop, right. and it's this Victorian lady, uh-huh. kind of in these, it's got diamond chips and right. a parasol. Very much not my mom's taste. Yeah, yeah. She was very much uh, uh, yep. streamlined, yep. Yep. but she knew I would love this, yep. and she, she got a kick out of it. She yep. thought it was really neat. So she purchased one and brought it home, and it... I don't, I tried to look it up because I, I took it out of the box two years ago when I did a Gilded Age tea yes. talk uh-huh. at the Troy Museum. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people were asking me about it. So I was like, yeah, I'd like to find out more about it. Yes. And I came up kind of empty. Uh. The The jewelry manufacturer is, I think they are now evolved into some sort of home party okay. business. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, all right. Okay. And... I, if anyone knows yeah. about this, I did write about this in a blog in yeah. 2022 All right. in one of my What Is It Wednesdays. Okay. And I didn't get it much in, much more information, right. but I love it. Yeah. And it's just kind of a nice yeah. remembrance. Yeah. And I think they're kind of fun. Yeah. Also, something to think about with your you wearing on the left side. All right. The, it's close to your heart. Aww. So if you're a romantic, yeah. it's kind of a nice place to put it. Very good. Okay. So, how are we doing on time? Uh, we got about uh, two and a half minutes. Okay, great. Because I just wanted to conclude with a brooch that Princess Anne wore recently okay. at a charity gala. Uh-huh. It was one that came from Queen Mary. It was She bought it for her sister like in the mid-1800s. Okay. So then she was just the yeah. Princess of Wales. Right, yeah. But when she became queen... Uh-huh. Yes, mm-hmm. when she became queen, it's Al- not Mary, Queen Alexandra. Right, right, right. Okay, okay, yeah, that's right. And then it went to Queen Mary. Right, and it's a lovely pin, and she wore it because it came to Queen Elizabeth. Right, and it is now worth about six hundred thousand uh-huh. dollars. Right. Mm. Well, not a bad investment, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how about that for a pin? All right. A little bit more than your yeah, little yeah. British yeah. pub pin. Very but good. But if you want to look that up, yep. check out the gala charity that she was at, and you can see the pin. Very good. Okay. Okay. So we are... I got look- a, about a minute and a half. So we're going to be looking for more adventures for our remote podcast. Yes. Okay. And... Watch out world. Yes. We're going to... Like you said, we're going to go where the T is. Right. And... Want again thank everyone for listening on TV studios for yep. letting us be here and their equipment. Mm-hmm. Our special guest Rob, mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> who is our yep. uh, lifetime guinea pig. Yes, and check out all the stories I mentioned yep. will be in the blog. Yes, and I think we're. Yep. Do I does my lug hole hear a special sound? Wow. <laughs> there we go. Uh, all right. All right, so thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks, Chris. All right. And as we like to say, please stay tuned. Very good. Okay.